The Rode NT1 versus the NT1A. It's a shootout. Which one should you get between each of these? I'll answer that plus all the nerdy stuff coming right up. So, good day and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm Batman. Well, you've heard of both of these mics, and you're watching this either because you're already a subscriber of my channel, or you've searched for a good video helping you decide which one you should choose. Maybe you've watched some videos, and the host left it up to you to decide, and never offered their own choices or opinions. That happens sometimes. Well, let me help you out by giving you a mic shootout with a definitive ending. So far, you've been listening to either the NT1 or the NT1A, as I've been toggling back and forth, but only letting you know it's either mic A or mic B. But don't worry, it won't leave you hanging. If you want a more in-depth video on the NT1, check out this thorough video I did right here. If you want to see a more in-depth video on the Rode NT1A, well, too bad, I didn't make one. Uh, was that foreshadowing? Yes. Perhaps it was. There is a very audible difference between each mic, and if your ears are trained a little, and if you're wearing headphones or at least listening on a good set of monitors, you'll be able to spot the difference. Before we start the tests, let's have a quick look at them. Look, two mics that are incredibly similar, except for the color. The NT1 is black, and the NT1A is silver. Neither have any buttons or switches on their bodies. They're both made with an all-metal construction. They both have a gold dot indicating which is the front side. They have slightly different bottoms in their design, and the name Road is written on different places. On the back, the Road NT1 has precisely that written near the bottom, while the NT1A has only made in Australia along the very bottom. The grill of the NT1 has a much tougher feel than the NT1A. I can't really push it in with pressure, but the NT1A has a bit more give. Both mics are relatively light, but the NT1A is noticeably lighter. The NT1A weighs at 307 grams, while the NT1 weighs 390 grams. That's considerable. Honestly, the NT1A just feels cheaper. It just does. They both come with exact same elaborate shock mounts that I'm not a big fan of. They're fiddly. The NT1 used to come with a sweet Rycote shock mount with a rectangular metal pop screen, but I can't find that one anymore, so they both come with these ones. The stock pop screens that come included with these shock mounts are appreciated, but um, pantyhose pop screens just aren't my favorite. I always opt for a Stedman Pro Screen instead, so I take the included pop screen off the road mics and use my own Stedman screens. I mean, it's nice that road mics come with these shock mounts, don't get me wrong. I'm just not a huge fan of them. They also both come with a free XLR cable, at least at the time of this video, and a, a dust cover. And it's a dust cover, not a flimsy traveling case made out of t-shirt. They measure, oh, hold on a sec, let me just find my trusty old measuring tape here. <laughs> you know, this measuring tape was manufactured in 1986 in a faraway land by a weird guy with two tight pants named Jareth. He was the Goblin King at the time. I picked it up in a strange maze world that same year. <laughs> the NT1A is about seven and a quarter inches long and about two inches in diameter, while the NT1 is seven and a half inches long, just over two inches in diameter. So the NT1 is almost a quarter of an inch longer. Who even cares about that? Okay, so now we get to the sound tests. So you've been hearing both A and B mics back and forth throughout this video. Do you know which one is which yet? I'll do two more completely unscientific A-B tests, and then I'll reveal which is which. It's best you wear headphones for this part. For these recordings, I'm going direct into the Apollo Twin X with no preamp emulation. Electric guitar amp miking, go!
acoustic guitar miking, go. So, do you know which mic is which yet? Here's a hint. One is way brighter and has a slightly distorted high end, the NT1A. And one is flat without harsh sibilance, the NT1. Here's the big reveal. Mic A was the Rode NT1A and Mic B was the AKG 414 XLS. Just joking. Mike B was the Rode NT1, obviously. You can get your very own Rode NT1A right now for 199 US dollars. Or you can get the Rode NT1 for 269 US dollars. These prices may change in the future, so don't hold me to them, future people watching this right now. I'm way back here in the past, so how am I supposed to know? So the difference is basically $70 between them. That might be not a big deal for some people, while for others, it is. So I guess that means it's time for analysis. I don't like the NT1A. I never did. I don't even know why I have it. It kind of just appeared in my studio one day. I think that if you lived in the suburbs, you were issued it. It came in the mail with samples of Tide. As I said, the highs are harsh. And it doesn't take EQ well. It's almost tinny. Nope. No, it is tinny. Not almost. I've seen some videos which show you how you combat the overly harsh, incredibly sibilant sound of the mic by moving the mic off axis from your mouth. Well, I'll tell you how you can combat the harshness. Don't buy it. Instead, buy the NT1. It's just $70 more in its a much stronger built and much better sounding mic, in my opinion. The NT1A is just harsh, much like my comments on it. The NT1 has a relatively flat frequency response and can take EQ much better. It's very forgiving on the highs and has nice warmer lows. But don't get me wrong, insert confirmation bias segment here for those who already own the NT1A and want to feel justified with their purchase. The NT1A isn't a hunk of shart or anything. I mean, this is a shootout video, not a review, and I promised I would give you my own opinion on which I would choose, and this is that. A good thing about the NT1A is it has a self-noise of 5 dBA. 5. That might make it the quietest mic in the universe. Excellent for ambience recording when you have two of them. The Neumann U87, when in cardioid mode, has a self-noise of 12 dB. And that's a $3,700 mic that everyone knows and loves, so there's that. The NT1 is insanely quiet also, with a self-noise of 4.5 dBA. That's only half a dB noisier. Imperceivable. If I was to use the NT1A for anything, it would be for quiet stereo recording with a pair of them, each in their own blimps. They would excel at that. But given the other choices out there, I would not recommend the NT1A for music or voiceover or anything like that if you had to choose between the two. But I know of a few VO artists that started on an NT1A and booked national jobs with it. So clearly I'm being too harsh on the mic when I say the mic is too harsh on me. But it's just not my cup of tea. Certainly not when the NT1 is sometimes cheaper when on sale and better sounding to my ears. Just sounds better. Better than this one. Doesn't this one sound just more full and have a warmer nicer sound it sounds really good it's impressive and this one has kind of like this high edge this cheap high edge to it i don't know what it is you know maybe like i'm a, I'm a snob and i'm an audio snob what am i gonna what am i gonna say i am that's what i am that's what that's what i am the nt1 is flat and quiet and takes eq well and feels better and actually looks better somehow you can do a lot more with the nt1 than an nt1a but 
Like I said, these are just my personal opinions, and I'm just some guy on the internet. You don't need to listen to me. I mean, how would you even explain that? Some guy on YouTube said not to get to NT1A. I don't know. Just some guy. He kind of lies about who he is sometimes. And probably other stuff. Oh, and he thinks he's a time traveler, so... Well, I am a time traveler. Here's me hanging out with Albert Einstein to prove it. See? I was much thinner back then, okay? Okay? Okay. It was a long story, and it has to do with particle physics and micro-singularities and the infamous quantum physics anomaly that is formerly known as the fat guy conjecture, but it happened. So, you heard both mics. What do you think? Which one do you prefer? Because that's what it comes down to. What you like and what makes you happy. So which did you like? Take my own opinions aside and let me know in the comments which mic you preferred. As for this shootout, I declare the Rode NT1 as the winner, as I'm sure a lot of you would know that I would do, because you probably know that I really don't like this mic. And I think I'm selling the NT1A. I don't need it anymore. Anyone want to buy a barely used beautiful Rode NT1A? It's a great mic. Let me go into all the stuff it can do. It's an incredibly quiet mic and it weighs almost nothing and it comes with this really lightweight carrying case. And it's really cost efficient and you can almost not see a reflection in it in the right light. And it's on a lot of albums that you've heard that I can't name but I assure you it's <laughs> on all the albums. I see you met my evil twin. He thought he could fool you, but uh, you could spot him a mile away, couldn't you? <laughs> but he's right. The NT1 is better. But get whichever one you prefer. You're in charge. Not me. Not him. I don't even really exist. Neither does my evil twin. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's still me back there. <laughs> but he's in the past. He's the past me. In your timeline. I'm the future me. You can tell by my massive beard and strange past-like but still somehow futuristic hat. I see past me hasn't done the usual sign-off yet. Don't worry. I'll do it. Thanks. Because it's not who I am underneath, but what I do that defines me. Bye now. And transmission. I did it for you. All right. Appreciate it. That was a bad. It was good. I'm liking the big one. You should grow big. Yeah, I should. You, you guys, watch that. But seriously, the NT1A is for sale.